Hey guys, so as promised, I wanted to show you guys how to scan in and convert uh, photos or scans or whatever uh, into a bitmap so that you can bring them into InDesign and apply color to them independently of what may have been there originally. So um, this is going to start in Photoshop. That's where we're going to begin our little journey. Uh, you are going to open up whatever uh, is your source material. Again, it could be a scan. It could be a photograph if uh, the librarians don't want you scanning a particular book, but you can take a very close up and detailed photograph. That'll work as well. You could even potentially source something from the internet, assuming A, it was high enough resolution, and B, open source or in the Creative Commons. That's probably the least preferable, but um, you could if you needed to, potentially. Um, it'll work for any of the stuff. So. We're going to find what was a very close-up photograph. You can see the resolution is pretty high, 2620 by 2369. Um, go ahead and click Open. Here's the photograph. Um, I'm not even quite sure what publishing mark this was, um, but you can see it's a close-up photograph, uh, and it's in color right now, even though it's mostly black and white. We want to get it to be totally black and white. Uh, we want ultimately a bitmap image using a 50% threshold as our filter. Um, so the first thing you need to do to get that done is to go up here to image and mode. Right now it's an RGB color space. Like I said, we want it to be a bitmap, but uh, it won't let us go directly there. We need to make it grayscale first and get rid of any residual color information. So go ahead and click grayscale little dialog box will show up. It'll ask if you want to discard the color information. Of course, that's exactly what we want to do. So go ahead and click discard. And then go back up to image mode. Now you can see bitmap is possible. And click bitmap. Now in most cases, and ours uh, particularly, we want the input and output resolutions to match. It will inherently, so go ahead and just leave that alone. It also asks for a method. Now there's a few different methods you can use depending on the process. If we were making, for instance, um, I don't know, silk screen film positives, we might use a halftone screen. But for our purposes, we want it to be a 50% threshold. What this inherently means is uh, pixels that are lighter than a 50% value will be discarded and anything that is above a 50% value, value will be made uh, pure black. So we're going to use that, click OK, and you can see discarded all that information based on that 50% threshold. Um, the only problem with this process, I suppose, and it's not that big of a problem, but you can see that if a certain area that was outside the image area was dark enough to be above a 50% value, it's retained. So um, you may want to consider cleaning these up a bit. There's a few ways to do it. Uh, if it's just one or two little specs, you can use the eraser tool. If, uh, if they're big specs, you can increase the size of your eraser tool by going up here. Um, you can do that. If it's a lot of little specs like this, you can use the polygonal lasso tool and um, just quickly kind of draw a as close as you can get comfortably without shaving off any of the image. Um, a bit of a selection around the mark. There you go, you can see we've made a selection in the image area. If you hit delete right now, it's gonna delete our publisher mark, you can see that. Um, and so, if you hit shift command I, that will inverse the selection, so anything you hadn't selected before is now selected, and hit delete, and you can see all those specks of dust went away. There's still a few around the periphery, but I think that's actually kind of nice, uh, kind of hints at the historical nature of things. Anyway, um, so a few are okay. If it's all over the map, I would say it's time to get in there and clean it up a bit. After you've got that taken care of, you need to save this. You can save it as a couple of different file types. I think on the blog it says TIFF, but Photoshop files are okay too. 
what uh, these two file types in particular allow us to do is save the bitmap, uh, save the file as a bitmap with bitmap information, as opposed to um, something like a JPEG, for instance, that would convert it back to grayscale, which won't work for our purposes. So either a TIFF or a Photoshop document is fine. Either way, it contains the same amount of information and InDesign treats it the same. So whichever one you select is just fine with me. I'll go ahead and click Save. I have a previously saved version, um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Replace, so I save over the top of it. Uh, if you do a TIFF, it'll ask you things about image compression, pixel order. Basically, the only thing you want to do is leave image compression set to none. These can be just left as is, um, the default. If you click OK, you can see we're now in a bitmap color space as a TIFF. So the next thing you want to do is head over to InDesign. We are going to place them the same as we did with our text earlier. So you file place or command D and select your file. And you're going to click OK. And our little cursor changed over to this um, preview of whatever image we're trying to apply. So you can just go ahead and click anywhere in the document and it is now in there. However, you'll notice fairly large and if you're using a high resolution photograph or anything like that it's going to be a pain in the butt because you're going to have to move it over, you're going to have to resize it, etc. So if you go to place it, select your mark, you get that same cursor but you can draw a little box by clicking and holding and dragging and now it will make it proportional to that size. The other thing you can do, just on the topic of other ways to import, you can go over here to the rectangle frame tool and draw a rectangle and then hit command D, select your mark, and it's now in there, which is a bit confusing because you can't actually see it. So this brings me to another point, and one that would undoubtedly frustrate the living hell out of you, um, is that Photoshop, while Photoshop treats things uh, as an intrinsically linked image, there's no reason for the two to be separated. This treats uh, content frames and the actual content differently, InDesign does. So you'll see, when I click on that little image eye area, this is the size of the image, still the same problem we have. There's a few ways to fix that. If you've specifically placed your image into a pre-drawn box and the image is much, much larger, you can go up to here and you can click one of these two uh, options, fill frame, fill frame proportionally or fill fit content proportionally. You can see that automatically resize things. Um, or you can hit proportional fill and that will make it proportional to the shortest dimension. The other thing you'll notice is that even though there's a blue box, there's also the brown box of the image area. You can move that independently of the box and you can move it without any sort of a proportionality to it. If you hold down shift, you can see if we just Freeform it, it can easily get distorted. If you hold down shift, it'll maintain the proportions. Another thing to notice is that if you want these two boxes to stay, both the image and the image area, if you want to rescale them at the same time, because right now if you were to rescale this, you would move the blue one, and then you'd have to go up here and hit that. If you want to size these in tandem, you can hold down shift command and drag on this and it will, for the time being, for the time you're clicking and dragging, will link the two. So again, that shift and command and you can resize things appropriately. One more thing to consider is that you guys have the limited use of two colors and this is always going to import in as black. And if you've chosen red and blue, because again, you're super patriotic, that's going to violate the rules. So you either need to make this publisher mark red or blue or whatever. The way to do that is to select on the image so that the um, 
image content box is selected, the brown one, or you can use the direct select tool, the open arrow, and click on it. That'll achieve the same result. In any case, you want to go over here to the color palette and open it up. You can put it in whatever color space you're working in. Keep in mind that this is ultimately for print, and if you're printing on a color laser, you're going to be in CMYK space. So it's best to be working in the space. But let's say we want to make this a uh, red color. So first we're going to get rid of the black. And we're going to add yellow and magenta. And you can see it'll respond dynamically to whatever color we're choosing. You can also double click on the swatch and pick from here if you prefer that. So again, just to recap, you place your mark. Again, Photoshop or TIFF is fine as long as it's in a bitmap color space. You can click and drag to make an appropriately sized box, one that's not going to fill your screen and cause you all sorts of resizing woes. You can either click on the image eye area right here that pops up to select the image, or you can use the open arrow tool. Click on that. Using the color palette, click CMYK, and then you can recolor it at your leisure. All right, so that should just about do it. Again, this will work for just about anything if you guys want to include half rounds, interesting scotch rules that you found, other sort of ornamentation that you might scare up on your little research mission. This is a way you would incorporate it into your final document for print. That's it. Thanks, and uh, see you in class.